was 10 in the morning in the port of Haiti. The British governor, Alan Cunningham, set sail for England. Britain ends three decades of presence in Palestine and leaves the two sides to face to face. Six hours later, in Tel Aviv, the leader of the Zionists, David Ben Gurion, decides to proclaim the Jewish state.
Keep them off site. They got five seconds to get to site. After years of struggle, the Zionists are reconnecting with Jewish history. Behind their flag will be a minority of the Arabs of Palestine. 150,000 people who choose to stay there and who will become Israeli citizens. Today, 60 years later, they represent 20% of the population. But most of the Arabs in Palestine are on the road. Almost an entire population, men, women and children, are now fleeing abroad. It is called a Nakba, catastrophe, in Arabic. The exodus that began in April after the Deir Yassin massacre, and it will affect more than 700,000 people, two thirds of the Arab population. The entry into the war against Israel by seven Arab countries the day after Ben-Gurion's speech doesn't change their fate. After several weeks of battle and the capture of the old city of Jerusalem after several spectacular advances, the Arab armies are retreating and losing new territories. A situation that further reinforces the flow of Palestinian refugees. According to the latest historical research conducted in Israel, half would have been forcibly evicted by Israeli soldiers. They found refuge in neighboring Arab countries, in Jordan or Lebanon, in refugee camps. Among them is Abu Hicham, who is 19.
They gave us tents. The ground is wet. We don't have a country anymore. One can't live normally anymore. They give us bread and cheese. I feel humiliated and I only think of one thing, to return to my village. As long as it takes, we will fight. Hate. Humiliation. Exile. In 1948, the history of the Arab-Israeli conflict is just getting started. Today, Abu Hicham, 78, still has refugee status. He lives in a Palestinian camp on the outskirts of Beirut, Lebanon, a few kilometers from Afif El Khod. For 60 years, neither has been allowed to return to live in their native land, Palestine. Some have emigrated to the West, like Edward Said, the little Christian Arab from Jerusalem. Okay, guys, won a pretty good competitive match there. That was pretty good. Did pretty good. Pulled 28 and whatever it was, four or something. They sucked, but, you know, yeah, once I get some real DPS, you can see how better I can do. Uh, the last video was about Hitler, and I'm sorry, it was about, uh, I forgot, I lost, uh, I'm sorry, I missed what that was. It was, um, uh, yeah, but it was by the best documentary, but I already cited them, so I'm starting to get tired. Now we hear about Stalin, The Red Terror, by best documentary. It's got 10 million views, probably pretty good, so we're gonna watch this. summer 1945 during the Europe Day victory celebration on Red Square in Moscow in front of the Kremlin Palace and the Soviet leaders the famous Russian army celebrated their victory over Nazi Germany just as it's done in the Roman Empire soldiers threw flags at the vanquished at the feet of the winner the man who beat Adolf Hitler Generalissimo Joseph Stalin After 20 years of power, the master of the USSR is at the height of his glory. A poet wrote this. Stalin, you are higher than the high celestial spaces and only your thoughts are greater than you. Your spirit, Stalin, is brighter than the sun. We call him the small father of the people. All over the world, he stands for hope of a fairer society. He is the idol of hundreds of millions of people. In France, we also sing his praises. With our whole hearts, we proclaim our ardent love for Stalin and we assure him of our unwavering confidence. Et nous Meanwhile, this man is one of the greatest criminals in history. He slaughtered his own people with unlimited brutality. We will annihilate without mercy anyone who threatens with facts or even through thought the unity of the state. He put in place the Gulag and enslaved 18 million people. You have to cut off destructive party members to preserve it of disease and infection. He 
These cynically caused famines which made 7 million deaths. Death solves all issues. No people, no problems. He sacrificed his family to his own power. A true Bolshevik shouldn't have a family. We are going to tell you about the incredible story of this son of a small craftsman who became one of the most powerful personalities on the planet. We are going to tell you how this man, who said he brings joy to his people became, by dint of megalomania and fanaticism, one of the most deadliest dictators that mankind has known. The year 1924 is when it all started. We are in the vicinity of Moscow, in the middle of the Russian winter. Lenin, the father of the Bolshevik Revolution just died. It's one of the first movies where Stalin has the starring role. He is carrying the chef's coffin alongside Soviet officials. Stalin is 46 years old. He is Secretary General of the Communist Party, a relatively erased post. Among his comrades, nobody can imagine that he will be the one to succeed the great Lenin. They don't know that 10 years from now, he will have almost all of them arrested and executed. Among them, nobody knows yet who really is Joseph Stalin. To his comrades, he is an insignificant character. One of them said, Stalin is the most outstanding mediocrity of our party. Another confirmed. We are not afraid of Stalin. As soon as he will want to get on his high horse, we will eliminate him. For long now, Stalin has been hiding his real intentions. His real name is Isaac Jugashvili. He was born in 1878, in the time of the Tsars. A monarchical regime based on inequality and submission to the monarchs. With a childhood spent in poverty. An alcoholic and abusive father. He grew up with orthodox monks. Very early, he joined the fight against the Tsar and took the name Stalin, the Man of Steel. In 1917, he participated in the Great Bolshevik Revolution with Lenin which overthrew the Tsar, abolished privileges. And gave power to the people. In the shadow of Lenin, he was just waiting for an opportunity to take power. The death of Lenin was that opportunity. In 1924, he succeeded, through maneuvers within the party, to rule out the greatest character of the moment, Trotsky, before exiling him to Kazakhstan. Nobody saw it coming. But just a few weeks later, Stalin took over power. He won't leave it in a moor. He chose to settle here, in the Kremlin Citadel, the former palace of the Tsars. It's from there that he will lead the USSR, the Union of Republic Soviet Socialists. The largest country of the planet. 
with a few people who will follow him blindly for about 30 years. He wanted to go further, much further than Lenin. He wanted to rewrite history and his determination was absolute. We Bolsheviks, we are a special breed. The others have no value, they are not worth a dime. Do not doubt it, comrades. To the working class, I am ready to devote all my strength and every drop of my blood. Stalin wanted a clean slate of the past. He abruptly wiped out the traces of old Russia that the revolution had spared. He passed a decree saying religion is against the interests of the people. Across the country, he removed the old orthodox icons before destroying them. In place of the old order, he had a radical project which was to build communism. An ideal, a happy and healthy society. Without any rich nor poor. A world where everything is shared, where everyone has equal chances at birth, where health and education are accessible to all. For the Soviet Union, he has unlimited ambition. Old Russia has always been defeated because of its delay. Slowing down the pace means the lag behind. Stragglers will be defeated. We, in the Soviet Union, we don't want to be defeated anymore. He launched gigantic construction sites. Skyscrapers, subways, railways, dams. Power plants. He wanted to modernize Russia in full swing for her to become a paradise for workers. A world where unemployment does not exist. And where each worker can offer a decent life to his family. A world where Stalin occupies the first position. We. Oui. The pioneers of the great country, party soldiers, always ready. We thank you Stalin for happiness that you are providing to our country. Stalin is the leader of the communists. His portrait is everywhere. In factories. On trains. In every classroom even in the dining rooms. He must be perfect because he reflects the success of communism. He personally corrected his official biography, with millions of copies sold. On the copies, he added a handwritten note. At the center, Stalin is the greatest captain of all times.
Actually, the real Stalin is more common. He is only five feet three inches big. He is putting on his wedge heel shoes. He often stands on a small wooden plate that makes him look taller. Look at this exceptional image. It's his real face. His skin is pocky because he had smallpox at the age of seven. But strange enough, in public, he had pristine skin. The new master of the Kremlin is a mystery to his people. He spends his time locked up in his office and he hides jealously his private life. Here are the only photos left of his wife, Nadezhda. She was a former wrestling comrade, 22 years his junior. He had two children with Nadida, Vasily, and Svetlana. He devoted little time to them, but on his little girl, he demonstrated a real fascination. I miss you, Dad. I don't care if the whole world hates me. If Dad asks me to go to the moon, I will. A few photos show a Stalin in his moments of relaxation. During summer vacation, when he takes his deputies on the Black Sea in party pillars. Ekaterina Voloshirov, the wife of one of his lieutenants, remembers that. Stalin loved nature expeditions. He would drive us there and we would sit next to a river. We would light a fire, grill meat while joking and singing. It really was the good times. The problem is, for Stalin, from the early years, the bad news are piling up.
pointing. By multiplying major industrial projects, Stalin sacrificed his daily life. The Russian population is growing. Yet no housing facilities were made available. Families had to move in together in requisitioned apartments and occupied all the small spaces. The standard of living is deteriorating. As proof, these clandestinely shot footage on the streets of Moscow are one of the rare proofs of poverty in the early 1930s. It's this rich English woman, Lady Mountbatten, who during a trip, recorded with her personal camera. Everywhere I see signs of malnutrition. I was told that this man, who rumags in the trash cans, was a former aristocrat. And that this one was a famous teacher during the time of the Tsars. Here is a little boy who was all alone and who asked me for help. Store windows are almost empty. Above all, the queues are endless. In the queue, some are left waiting all day, unable to buy anything. In the USSR, the communist dream is already falling down. But in the Kremlin, Stalin doesn't want to hear anything. For him, there is no such thing as failure. The system was faulty because their policy was being sabotaged. He was looking for culprits among economic officials. Just like the financial desk, Ryukinov, that he considers incompetent and who has collaborated through in an awkward position. At the margin, Stalin wrote. For all his sins past and present, hang Brukhanov from the testicles. If they hold up, consider it acquitted by the court. If they give up, throw them in the river. Stalin was only half joking. In 1930, Okay, uh, this concludes my broadcast day. This session was 12 hours long. 
uh, with about two hours of breaks or whatever, uh, something like that. A uh, pretty good session. So uh, to uh, finish up the day, uh, you guys have been watching um, Skycat Live. And uh, this is my identification you've been watching skycat live full-time variety gamer all day every day put me on in the background click click on the cat's face to donate uh you know i'm 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 uh, across several entities but i'm on youtube only these days thank you so much uh for paying attention to me today today i had a lot of fun got a lot done got a lot done got a lot of guns and rust despite all the raids and offlines that people do just to take advantage of me when i'm not there they're like house robbers and yeah i got hit by a house robber and yeah he's better at, at sneaking around at 6 45 in the morning like a little pussy than me i would say so uh yeah and um definitely uh but he's not better than Russ than me. I killed him ten times and he still hasn't killed me. Not 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 in not in months. Not, or I don't think anyways. I've killed him every time I've seen him for a long, 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 long time. You saw yesterday when I just clowned on him like fifteen times. It was hilarious. So whatever. Uh you know, that was fun. And then we have we played a lot of Fallout seventy six and I got pretty far, got pretty further in that, like another two or three levels and and um and then uh, some Fallout New Vegas and some Overwatch 2. Played a lot of games today. Had a lot of fun. Uh, it is 9 a.m. my time. Gonna go to bed. It's been too long. And, uh, uh, you know, again, guys, uh, thank you so much for your time. Oh, you can't see it. I'm so sorry. So, uh, you, you have been watching Skycat.live. My, my website is Skycat.live. Uh, come, uh, you know, uh, full time variety, variety gamer all day, every day. Put me on in the background. Click on the cast face to donate. This is the only place you can do it. I, I'm not an affiliate of YouTube or Twitch, and nor do I want to be. And uh, thank you so much for your time today, guys. I really loved it. Um, it was a good session. Uh, let's start start over again and do it again tomorrow. <laughs> I'm excited. Fuck yes. So, like you know, it's, it's like it, like it's weird. We you know you found your 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 following, your your life's job or your career or whatever. When when every day just blows by and you're ready to do more of it. The only reason I'm stopping now is I need sleep and I've got I've got social engagements today and I've got stuff I've got to do to help people and all this other stuff so yep uh that's all and uh I believe that's it today thank you so much for your time guys it was so good to see you today uh uh today's video will be out tomorrow and yesterday's or sorry the day before yesterday's video came out today or whatever yesterday's video came out today and that is that is reflected here in my videos you will see that i am currently still in an upload pro pro process because uh, youtube's kind of slow but there's 10 10 15 i don't know why that one's like still going but this one's weird that one should be uploading but i feel like it isn't and for some reason i really don't know why so we'll yeah this one i don't know how far are we on this one this one is three hours left on an sd pro processing no estimate available I don't know. I don't know what to do about all that. But anyways, um, so yeah, these videos are going up very slowly, and it might I might get weeks and weeks ahead before you know before I get all this onto YouTube. But we'll just put each day out slowly, you know, and and uh, I'll shoot forward into the future and keep firing shots back behind me of videos that that show my whole day's progress and stuff. And while I might not be the most entertaining guy. I definitely am putting in like 14 hours of work every day and I'm loving it. I hope and that's enough. We'll see. So anyways, um, on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. I love you. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for being loyal. Thank you for being my friends. Hopefully you like the games that I played today and sorry if I was slow, but it's all processed for me if, if I restart Fallout New Vegas seven times it's because the mods are iffy, but once I'm done, I'm done So on that note, I love you guys. You have an excellent day